What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Vile Files Bachelor in Paradise Recap Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Allie and Amanda. That was the best one yet. That was Hello, good. Good morning. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Before we get started with breaking down Bachelor in Paradise, don't forget to send in uh, all your Ask Nick or Texting Office Hour questions at asknickacasmy.com, cast with a K. Obviously, with the holidays approaching, we'd love uh, some holly, uh, holiday situations. Some holly jolly problems. If you're sad about, you know, the holidays or you're fighting about the holidays, you know, we're here, we're sad for you, but here Family for problems, you. Family problems, relationship problems. If you're in a situation, as always, we we're, we're still want to get that uh, situationship uh, couple on an on ass, Nick. Um, so be sure to... Send in uh, those stories all to uh, asknick at castme.com, cast with a K. And uh, again, if you uh, if you try listening to the Ask Nick episode early, first thing Monday morning on the East Coast, and it was the old update episode, uh, that problem has been fixed. Sorry about that. Uh, we dealt with that person appropriately. Uh, but if you haven't listened to it yet, go back. Uh, check it out now. It was fixed early Monday morning. But if you had already downloaded, or if you had like an automatic download, if you listen to the Vile Files, you might have to refresh, uh, or maybe just go to like a different platform and listen to it. If like if you always listen on iTunes, I don't know. It's, yeah, if you it's, remove the download, remove like download, three dots, remove download, re-download, easy and re-download piece. it, and you'll get the new episode. All right, our special guest today, the one, the only Jake Miller. What's up, musical Woo! legend? <laughs> Thanks for having me. How are you? Bachelor fan extraordinaire. I am. You have am. been a Bachelor fan for some time now, have you? Yeah, not? yeah. Um, goes back uh, probably like five, six, seven, eight, what nine, What was your first season years. you watched? Um, I don't really remember. It just feels like ever since I've had, like, had girlfriends, I've been like watching it with okay. them. And then I'm like, okay, I'm like super invested. This is a fun show. Speaking of, are we allowed to talk about your Hell new Hell yeah, love? we are. Recently engaged. Yeah. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Uh, you popped the question uh, Saturday. Saturday, yeah, on my fiance's I, I, birthday. I got the on your fiance's birthday. How yeah. does she feel about that? I feel like there's always mixed opinions on yeah. proposing on on like stacking the occasions. Yeah. On, yeah, well, it wasn't like a it wasn't like a huge like number birthday. It wasn't like her big like twenty first or thirtieth birthday. It wasn't important. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> it wasn't important. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but yeah, I was going back and forth because I didn't want to like take the light off of her birthday. But at the same time, it's like, what a it's what a fun right. birthday that would be. Yeah. And um, all of her friends and family came in and it was awesome. like a birthday celebration. So too. was this planned for a while? Oh my God. It seems like forever. It, it felt like I planned a wedding. Okay. Yeah. And now there's like a big weight lifted off my shoulders. It feels great. What was it, even though this is Bachelor in Paradise recap episode, but we talk a lot about relationships. What yeah. was it about this relationship? How many serious relationships have you had? Besides this one, just one in eight just year relationship. An but, eight year relationship. Yeah. What was it about this relationship that made you feel this is my person? We are just like we have so much in common. Um, she's like the most beautiful person inside and out. So intelligent. She's a, she's a speech pathologist. So like someone in the music industry, like dating someone who's just like in a completely different industry, and like you can come home and talk about like completely different things, and yeah. and just like. I don't know, just just build off of each other and hype each other up. Like, I don't know, I, I could go on and on about her. So That's great. How long have you guys been together? Uh, like three and a half years. Awesome. I slid into her DMs like five years ago. Love it. Wow. Love that. I slid on in. A lot of parallels. Like my girlfriend slid into my DMs. She's in a uh, uh, surgical technologist. I, I totally relate to. Yeah. yeah. What was the year and a half different. in between? Um, in between. Oh, we were just kind of like, I mean, she lived in Florida. I was oh. out here in L.A. Um, we were just kind of ghosting each other. Like months would go in between. I, I was like, well, if you slid in five years ago and you've yeah. only been together three and a half, yeah. what was the what was Sure, the yeah, yeah. Time? It took her a year and a half to there respond to that DM. Right. You were fucking so you around worked for a year hard, and a half. Yeah. It was just who, typing the whole who, time. Uh, all right, but like after a year and a half, who really said enough is enough? Are we going to date or not? Who put who put the feet to the fire? I think there was just like some some like point where I just started like FaceTiming her every day. Um, and the more I would FaceTime her, the more I would realize like, oh, this girl's like really cool. I don't know. It just, it just was like a slow, slow build, slow grind. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Here we well, are. Well, congratulations on love. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Ooh, are we okay. going for a long engagement, short engagement, somewhere in between? Um, uh, probably like a 2024, 2024 wedding okay, just right. because I feel like all like the, the wedding venues are so like backed yeah. up because of sure. the pandemic. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. What kind of wedding do you guys want? Outdoorsy, definitely in California. Will you be performing at your wedding? Definitely not. Okay. Maybe not. Do you have a musical friend in mind? 
Like, mm. I feel like there's a musical community you're a part of. I do have, I mean, musicians almost work? all my you friends are musicians, yeah. but I feel it would be more like a violinist in the corner okay. or like a celloist or right. something like that. All right. Well, congrats, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's talk ring. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of cut? Uh, it's an oval. Um, got it in Florida. I went Let's shopping. zoom on in on that. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's That's a rock. big. I went, oh, with my, uh, I went with my parents and Rose Gold Band. I know she likes Rose Gold. Yeah. And uh, little diamonds around. That is large. Yeah, it's it's a big one. How many how many how many, how many carrots? I think it's like a four point something. Okay. Yeah. It's like the one Dean lost <laughs> in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she was showing it off to her friends uh, at the at the bar that night. We all did like a big surprise, uh, like party celebration. And one of her friends says, "Catch it on," and she drops it on the floor. Is it o- is it okay? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's okay. Charged. I'm like, really? You got one job. Just don't drop it. Okay. No. All right. I'm just Wait, taking notes. Is that but. polite to ask to try on someone's engagement ring? Like, I feel like I feel that's like, kind of a no-no, especially it? if it's early. I've seen larger rings that the bride to be, I guess, the uh-huh. has no problem being. Yeah. Like. I guess I wouldn't ask. It seems but to I would be happily fun. Let somebody try mine on. It was yeah. one of those that's, things. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like they. At They're like, feel how heavy it is. Yeah, yeah, at my sister's bachelorette party, like half of the girls were engaged and half of us were just completely single. So we were like sitting around the table and it's like, oh, honey, do you want to see what you would look like with a ring yeah, on? Exactly. Like, we'll pass them over to you. <laughs> so funny. That's a nice shot. It's her best friend who, who, who wanted to try it on. So fair enough. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But, if you're just, but if, I think if you try on the ring before she sees it, like that's bad luck. Mm-hmm. You know oh, yeah. I mean? Like if I was to show it to a friend or a family like member. A, that's what is it? A uh, family stone where the sister tries it on and then it gets stuck. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Not, not good. good. Yeah, my sister saw the ring before. Or Brandy but did. She didn't try it on and that's the important she part. She did not. Nope. <laughs> oh, stunning. Looks really good. Gorgeous. When it's blown up like that. Gorgeous. You did a good job. Thank you. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you so much. How exciting. Appreciate it. You guys have nice hands too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Well, I, I spent 20 something years biting my nails um, and I couldn't kick the habit. So now I get manicures once a week, and it's the only way to not oh. bite them. Because when they look good, I don't want to bite them, and I think I stopped biting them finally. I bite my nails too. Also, Dude, manicures are important for everyone. Cuticle care, yeah. you know. Even well, if it was you're not mostly the cuticles. Statement. It wasn't really the nails, but like I would just pick up my cuticles in the movies, uh, and I'd be bleeding. I'm like, this is disgusting. Oh, oh. oh yeah, Ow. I don't, I don't, yeah, good solution. I've, I've become quite the expertise nail biter. Gross. I don't, I don't bite habit, my nails, but. but I do pull out my own eyelashes. That's something I'm trying to work through. <laughs> I'm Damn. missing a whole chunk right here. You pull your... Uh-huh. uh-huh. That sounds really stressful. Yeah, yeah, that sounds... And I did this whole chunk when I was like sitting in a bar with friends. Like there was oh no God. reason for me to be That's doing that. <laughs> Another <reason>. Mildly concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay. Yeah, I go for manic walks around the neighborhood. There we go. That's, I feel like that's a healthier Usually. way to... <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad habit. Yeah. Like, Get March. some exercise. <laughs> Hopefully uh, they grow back. <laughs> they're, they they're, they're coming. I haven't really um, noticed. Yeah, that's why the eyeliner's on there. <laughs> oh, oh wow. I see what you mean. <laughs> now yeah. I have to get a closer look. Oh, no, God. I just mean in terms of like eyeliner, it's a smart, like I do that sometimes if I don't want to wear mascara, I'll just wear a really thin eyeliner Because there's thing, literally a uh, hole right on my, my lash line and then it looks like. Your eyebrows or eyelashes? I do both. <laughs> eyelashes are harder to get away with because then they're just gone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you look nice. Thanks, Nick. When it comes to choosing a wireless plan, you're forced to compromise. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could get reliable service without a contract and save money? Introducing Total by Verizon, a new no contract, no credit check carrier for you and your family with plans starting at just $30 per month on America's most reliable 5G network. Sacrifice nothing, experience everything. Total by Verizon is available at totalbyverizon.com and at retailers nationwide. Based on first place rankings and Root Metrics first half 2022 5G assessments of 125 metros. Experiences vary, not an endorsement. Everly Well. Oh, love me some Everly Well. Here's the thing, guys. I'm not a big needle person. It's why I avoid a lot of tests that I should probably get. Um, blood work freaks me out. I'm also not great with instructions. You know who has made it the simplest process ever? Ever, ever, <laughs> Everly Well. 
<laughs> Everly Well has made it so simple. They come in a little package in the mail. All the instructions you need are right there. They have uh, the like little cleaning little pad thing, the thing you stab yourself with, the where the blood goes, the and then they even they even put band aids in there. You don't even have to get your own band aid for when you're done with it. They truly think of everything. And then you take your your blood panel, you stick it in their already prepaid shipping label along with anything else that you need to be tested. Stick it in the mail. It's already paid for. And then they have an app on your phone. You'll be able to track, you know, that it's, you know, been picked up and it's on its way to the lab when the test results come in. It's always much faster than you expect. And then you can see all your results on the app. And then, you know, if you need to do anything with those results, take that to your your physician. You're ready to go. Your lab work's already been done. There is no truer way to say I love you than by taking care of each other. And that's why this year, the gift of health is all you need. And with Everly Well, you can find 30 plus at home lab tests, vitamins, supplements, and more for every person on your holiday list. Give the gift of nourishing vitamins and supplements in over 30 at home lab tests like food sensitivity and women's health to help your loved ones get further on their health goals. The gift of health has never been so easy to share than it is this holiday. For listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a discount at 20% off an at home lab test at everlywell.com slash V I A L L. That's everlywell.com slash V I A L L. A-A-L-L for 20% off your next at-home lab test, everlywell.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Let's get into uh, some tea. Let's get in it. Rachel, former bachelorette Rachel Rakia, is dating again. All right. She has fully announced that um, she went on a date. It was a coffee date. They kept things casual with this guy. Do he's we know a, who? He's not in Bachelor Nation. He's in the music scene. Perchance you know him. We don't know who it is. But Mystery he guy. slid into her DMs. Another okay. DM slide. All right. It's a way to go, apparently. Interesting. She said there will be a second date. And when asked if they kiss at the end of the date, she said maybe. Um, but she said that she wasn't sure how to start. What, what's with the maybe? I don't know. I think it was a cutesy way of saying yes. It's de- yeah, it's definitely not no. Yeah. If you don't kiss, you don't say maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it's embarrassing. <laughs> All right. Saying, well, maybe. <laughs> I feel like it's a yes. Um, um, okay. But it was actually other form, other former bachelorette, Michelle, who convinced her to go. Apparently, she didn't want to go. She didn't know how to like necessarily revert back to normal non-bachelor dating. Um, but Michelle was her hype woman and encouraged her right. to go. And well, thank get, God she did, because well, now we're going on a second date. Way to get back out there. Yeah. yeah. Where'd they go? At some coffee shop, I guess. Michelle and Rachel strike me as a very powerful friendship duo. Like, I feel like both of them bring out the like, alpha can control any given situation energy in one another like I could just like I can see them entirely throwing a full bachelorette party like just t- tackling anything you know really like having a U.S. like a U.N. peace accord like I just feel like the energy that they would bring as friends is both like such intense fierce like let's get it done. Do you feel like Gabby's gonna join in on that now that she's single or is Gabby like a completely different energy? Well, I've, I'm oh, curious what other people would say. I think Gabby could have that energy if she had to, but I think that's not her baseline. Yeah. I just saw Gabby the other day at uh, Dancing with the Stars, and she seemed happily with that guy. And then I saw like two but days Eric later. Eric was there? Yeah, he was there. When? When did you go? Just maybe, maybe like two weeks ago. Wow. Three Eternity weeks ago, maybe. <laughs> Didn't he like post in support of Gabby? He did, She did that interview after an episode. I think it was after Halloween night. And she was saying that they were supporting each other from afar. He did an Instagram story saying like, vote no, for like, Gabby. After they broke up. There. Yeah. After they broke up, he did a vote for Gabby. Yeah. Which, you know, nice. But rumors, rumors are swirling in the, the Dancing with the Stars fan community that she might be addressing it tonight because it's the semifinals. And typically it's like, that's where things like get emotional and they have their little like, so you she's know, using packages. her relationship with Eric to get votes. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows if she'll even talk about it, but it's a semifinal, so she might. She's a good dancer. Yeah, she's crushing she it. Is. Yeah, she's crushing it. Well, you, were you just there for fun? Yeah. Uh, Brandy <laughs> was, we were watching on TV. She's like, I want to go to Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, I know someone there. Okay. Let's, let's do it. So we went. Yeah, I, I should go back one of these days. Wait, yeah. can we go? I want to go. Were you on? I'll probably take uh, Natalie first. Well, I just didn't he know. He was on, but I was clearly on. forgettably. You were on? Well, this was like <laughs> oh, the first season God. I've seen in a long time. Amanda. I'm a bad dancer. It's okay. <laughs> was it fun? I had a good time. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I could do it. I, I can't dance like at all. I'm okay. You can't dance at all? Mm-mm. I don't think. Okay. I haven't really tried in a long time. Is You're it a musician, the choreography you, that yeah. scares you or is it the... You um, have like no rhythm? Like the No, movement. I have rhythm. 
I don't know. I just haven't danced in like since I was like eight years old. So like now I'm just like scared to try it. Well, I was going to say you have the energy of like the one eight year old boy in the hip hop class. <laughs> you know, and it's like a bunch of like young girls. And yeah. then there's like one boy. Is that a um, good thing that I have that energy? Yes. Because <laughs> okay. I would think that you were classically trained. Like, do you feel like you would be more comfortable on like a Dancing with the Stars situation or a wedding dance floor freestyle yeah. having a good time? No, that's that's where I thrive. Okay. Wedding. Well, wedding. Like in Wausau, Wisconsin, your you're at a wedding. Would you be able to dance? Dance, dance, or like you know, drunk dance, like everybody. Like have a good time. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, I'm always. Yeah, but I'm like, always... but like, would would people in Wausau, Wisconsin, go? That guy can get down. No, or, no, no, or no, would no. people even in Wausau, Wisconsin, be like, no, no? I think he, they like would say whipping out a pasta play, say no. like <laughs> it's ready to go. <laughs> you know, just, I just don't feel like a lot. You know, maybe there's some people in Wausau, Wisconsin who can crush the dance floor, but I feel like your typical wedding there are not. Your yeah, tr- mostly are, are not. I think even, even they would judge my my dancing. Is that, that your gauge? Like it's, it's always bad. just like, what would the people at Was- I don't know, Wasa, Wisconsin? Popped in my head. I'm from <laughs> as long as they think you're good, I think it's obscure yeah. your town. From- Nick, do you identify as someone who like people would be like, oh, he can get How down? How would the people in Wasa think yeah. you're? Yeah, no, dancing? I can dance. Okay. Can you for the people? Yeah, at a yeah. wedding, I can shake. I can shake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can shake it. Oh, like I'm not like great. You know, I'm not like Gabby's obviously way better than me. She's like. Especially from a choreography standpoint, yeah. she's. Uh, but like, yeah, I'm better than what you might expect at a wedding. Probably because of the introvert factor. Like, I think that's the only reason people would expect. Or the skating. You're a good skater. You skateboard? No, he little like roller, roller skate. skates. Oh, yeah. cool! Nice. Little roller skates. I don't skates? know. I, <laughs> I, 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 I was just gesturing. He puts his little feet <laughs> in his roller blades. <laughs> they're not blades though. They're like uh, the four ones, right? Yeah, well, why do you got to mock? <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Who's <laughs> weird is this? <laughs> his little roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands. <laughs> I was trying to show that it was two entities. Do you ever like go one. to that Venice skate park? I like, used to. I used to live right by there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, sorry uh, to go off topic. Crushed. Uh, congratulations to Rachel on her. Yes, getting back out there. Getting back Keep out our there. eyes peeled on Gabby this evening, and finally Jesse Palmer is starting to drop little hints about Zach's upcoming season of The Bachelor. Maybe it's just me, but I keep forgetting that they already announced him as Bachelor. Like, I really it's not a good sign. Yeah, but um, he said he was kind of giving a tease, and he said Zach has been amazing. He's incredibly intelligent. He's mature. He's very emotionally mature. Zach's season is a bit of a throwback. This season is a lot more about the romance and the love and maybe a little bit less about the drama. So does that just mean the girls aren't? He did also continue to say like the girls are really just there for Zach. (laughs) So So everybody's boring, basically. God. Well, it sounds brutal. Throwback. (laughs) Well, you think about like the tone that they usually like for the promos were like the most dramatic season ever. And it's like the most traditional. This is a return (laughs) to wholesome love story. Like it just doesn't sound the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, though. Oh, well, that wraps us up. Not a big week. Well, a lot to get into. Yeah. The, like, what a shit show these two episodes were. Oh, boy. You know how they say some infinities are bigger than others? Yes. I already loved Frame Bridge an infinite amount, but now I somehow love them more. I, S2G, this company is amazing because I think around the holidays, my big question is I want to get people get gifts for people that are meaningful, that are joyful, that are enriching, enriching, but I also don't want to get them clutter. Like, how do you find that good combination of like something they can unwrap and feel in their hands that's nice, but also something that has like sentimental value? And that is why Framebridge comes in so clutch. I think there is few things as satisfying as when you capture a moment with loved ones and then you get to prominently display it in your home in the most sleek, gorgeous way possible with Framebridge. I had a friend who got married this year. It was super exciting, huge milestone. And I was able to design basically this little like gallery wall for her with various shots from her wedding, um, photos of her and her husband, photos of all of like the friend group that went there with her. Um, And also I sent in the wedding invitation to Framebridge. They perfectly framed it. It was easiest process in the world. Got a mailer. That's genius. The invites? Yes. You like frame the wedding invite because theirs was so pretty. I had this awesome photo of them. Framebridge sends me the super easy mailer. I put the invite in, send it there, and then I get back a perfectly framed version of it. Marissa, if you're listening, tune out. That's your Christmas present. We love Framebridge. Everything is customized there. They know exactly what you need. They have so many good options, and it is just high-quality stuff. They take great care of you, make sure you're perfectly satisfied with everything the way it turns out. Cannot say enough good things. I mean, I got this perfectly framed picture of Jeff. 
And Jeff it's, on like, the it was, beach. It's, it's Jeff on a beach. And it was right from my Instagram. Super easy. Well, get started today. Frame your photos or give someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and place your order today. Instead of paying hundreds at a framing store, Framebridge starts at just $39 plus free shipping. Order online or stop by a Framebridge store near you to work with a designer in person. The experts at Framebridge custom frame your items and deliver your finished pieces right to your door. Amanda and I talk about Hungry Root probably more than we talk about anything else. Would you agree? Yes, I'm actively a Hungry Root customer. I know one thing about Amanda, huge chickpea cookie dough lady. One thing I know about her. I love it. And one thing you know about Allie is she loves getting some inspiration with a recipe, some fresh, <laughs> yummy ingredients. They make it easy for you. You like the tacos, right? I, you love the tacos. I love, you you some love tacos. the tacos. If you, it's truly, do we have a friendship or are we just Hungry Root's greatest fans? <laughs> Who's to, to say? Who's to say? Who's to Same say? thing. <laughs> Hungry Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high quality food delivered to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one. Take a fun short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know you, your goals, and how you like to eat. Are you gluten-free? Do you like sweets? They'll keep it top of mind for you and start building your cart. For all you uh, hardworking young professionals out there that want to eat right, eat healthy, but don't have the time to plan your meals or shop, Hungry Root is the perfect solution for you. Right now, Hungry Root is offering the Wi-Fi listeners 30% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get 30% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Let's just dive right into it, I suppose. I guess it just starts, we're still crying over the exit of Jesus. Oh my gosh. Oh AKA my God. So many tears. Morning. Brandon what? is wrecked. I know. Brandon is done. I <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get he's your boy, and I understand you want to find love, but we haven't seen Serene and Brandon in ages. They've been napping. And yeah, all of a sudden, they, they sleep a lot. pop out of nowhere to just both. I We were watching, and I asked Natalie, like, do we, would we cry over, <laughs> over our someone friend, else's our relationship? friend getting ghosted or something? Yeah. I mean, I suppose we have friends in relationships who have been dating for a long time, and... and They've become good friends. And I would be sad if I found out they broke up today. And I guess in paradise, everything's heightened. And it seems like, yeah, I, I noticed that a lot of these episodes, there was like eons and, and a couple days were, were used to describe the same relationship by the same person. And so I, obviously timing and context is just a little bananas in this world. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I guess they're, I mean, again, I've met Ronnie multiple times i consider him a friend wonderful wonderful guy but damn <laughs> he's the one person on the show that i that i know you, in, in you, real life and i love Ryan. yeah he's great yeah i might shed a tear if he, if he left <laughs> I, I'd, I'd be fine <laughs> <laughs> i was texting I'm him like, while it happened i'm like dude you handle that so well like he's just such a good guy yeah um, I, I met him at a chargers game and we've just stayed in touch he's he's a really good guy he's a he's a he's a, he's a great guy yeah maybe do you think brandon is like afraid of is it like is he projecting an insecurity of like, well, if it could happen to Ron, it could happen to us? I don't know, because he was very much like, what, the scene of him and Serene on the beach, when he was going on and on and on about like, I love you so much, there's never going to be a day where I'm not loving you, like da da da. It felt like it was almost like a pre-proposal speech. I mean, you would know. Like, yeah. it, was, it was a lot of big statements happening. Do you think Brandon is just always waxing poetic? I think he, I think he feels that feels things very deeply. Yeah. I yeah. do. And he's I an love that guy. for him. Yeah. I think he's in tune. I think he's connected in a way that not everyone lets themselves be. And I think it's big waves of feeling. I don't know. I also wonder if it's more of like almost a guilt of like, I'm so happy. And I thought you were finally going to join, like hop on the happy train. And then you got kicked off or like you got a ticket, but then it was counterfeit. Like, I think it was something about the, the whiplash of like the yes, then no. But what do we think about like, Eliza flip-flopping like and the way that translated to her rekindling stuff with Justin or that attempt 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 to rekindle <laughs> yeah going to his house what did you think I mean obviously I I don't know Justin in person so I was you know I love Rodney as I said I I don't think she should have you know flip-flopped and she said that she like got you know persuaded by everybody who was saying that they have so much love for Rodney but that's a good reason to be persuaded if everyone loves that person like Maybe you're not seeing something that everyone else is seeing. Yeah, but, but what haven't you ever 
having you ever before you found love and yeah. now an engaged man, haven't I'm sure you had people try to set you up. Yeah. But and when sure everybody is like I mean, I get it. Like if, if she's not feeling it, obviously like follow your heart. Like I, I don't blame her for doing that, but I'm Team Eliza here. Are you? Interesting. Yeah. No. Am I the only one? Go Rodney. I wasn't loving her speech to Justin. It doesn't seem I, like Justin's into it though it, either. I, I I'm just like Eliza versus Justin, I guess. Not versus, but I I thought I didn't think Justin made any sense. I mean, that's okay, that's not true. I made it I think he made some sense. I know we talk a lot about being aware whether you're an option or not in relationships, you know? And and that's the thing. We talk more about just being aware of the possibility, like especially early on. It's like it just now that like it might not be excited about you. And clearly Eliza seems more confused and excited about any of these relationships. Maybe that's something. But I guess here's what I'll say. I, I just, my concern, if I find out that at any point that Justin ends up pursuing Eliza in any way after this, then I will feel like Justin was just more, more concerned in that moment. I think he's just playing games, either with himself or with Eliza. You know what I'm saying? Like, would you, and if you found out, let's say, that after this whole thing got done airing, let, let's say Justin and Eliza kept talking or, pursued a relationship would that change your opinion it would be interesting to if eliza was willing to then pursue stuff with justin after, after. he did not fight for her i like i i think oh my gosh the amount of times respectful. they want them to fight <laughs> yeah but like respectful conversation but like obviously justin was like no i think i want to feel more chosen than this like big theme is everybody like wanting to feel chosen Everyone wants to be chosen but then it's like okay but also like how are you simultaneously chosen and able to be a chooser if like you're both wanting to yeah. have both that then both of you need to be able to give everyone that. has flip-flopped now at some point i, I like, guess yeah. what i'm saying is it's did eliza do this perfectly no mm -hmm. but she made a tough decision. She woke up the next day pretty quickly after the fact, had a, hey, this doesn't feel right. She broke up with Rodney, wasn't pretty, but it was respectful. Mm -hmm. And then she like was honest about, hey, I'm going to go after Justin. She went to Baltimore, <laughs> knocked on his door and sat down. And it's just like, listen, like all I'm saying is if J I just got a feeling Justin said no not because he's not interested in eliza because he was on camera but because he yeah was on camera and wanted to you know stand have in his, his power and, and have his moment and like is gonna low-key be like hey, well, you want like let's let's just maybe let's just see afterwards but not not until i like put you down a little bit for like not picking me first yeah. and it's just like when like i loved how eliza was like i don't know i've known the guy for three days like, sorry, I didn't, like, figure it out, you know? Like, it's it's one thing, you know? Like, if Natalie broke up with me today and said, sorry, you know, met someone else, and then, like, three months later comes back, it was like, you know what? I had to date someone else so I could know it was you. I'd be like, you know what? I don't know if I want to be an option. Yeah. But this is not quite the same. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, you've known someone for a couple days. They made a pretty grand gesture to try to make you feel validated and special. And if you don't like her, fine. If you just just say that. But like, it's almost like, I just didn't like the energy of making her feel like she didn't, he, Justin made it seem like he's not gonna pursue Eliza because she didn't do it right. Because she didn't do it exactly how he wanted him to do it. Mm -hmm. The way that you know he wanted to be loved and pursued. Just like some of the, you know, like Kate or Eliza did earlier. And it's just like, kind of like you said, it's just like someone like has to just like have a piece of humble pie well, and, and say, like, you know, all right, like, let's give with, it a shot. She was with Rodney. You come down, Justin. It, yeah, that's a great gesture. And you're clearly, clearly just there for her. But she has longer experience with Rodney. You take her on one date. Like there's just, it, it, it wasn't even like equal across the board. They didn't all show up at the same time. Yeah. Are we agreeing or disagreeing? I can't tell. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, I I agree <laughs> that, yes, they are not all coming at the same time. This show is musical chairs. Like, yeah, yeah I guess all I'm saying is if, you, if you're not into her, then just say that. But don't make her feel like there would have been a chance for you guys to date had she gone about it a different way when you guys have only known each other for three or four days. And if I hear that you pursue her, 
outside of this show, then sir, and I love you, Justin, I've met him, I consider him a friend, you're playing games. You're playing games with yourself and you're fucking up a potentially good situation just because you want to have a moment on TV. Damn. 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 And if, I'm open Damn. to be convinced otherwise, but like, what, what's, what's stopping him from being like, you know what, yeah, like, let's go on a... Sure, let's let's go. Out, let's grab. You're here. You're in Baltimore. I know a couple of good restaurants. Let's go. <laughs> you know, like she's in Baltimore. She came to see him. And if again, if you're not interested, if all of a sudden and a day and a half, you're not interested, then fine. But like, I don't know. It just seems a bit performative. Hmm. Jake, what did you make of it? I agree. I, he, he that I convinced was, you? Yeah, you can. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I mean. Listen, I, I think he was definitely like, it's, it looked like he was like in his pajamas when they opened the door. So he was probably like super caught off guard. But I would like to like see them actually like go out and, you know, try things. And that way we could be like convinced that, you know, yeah. Justin actually really likes her. But uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy that they actually like went to Baltimore with her. I don't think I've ever really seen like anything like that on Bachelor in Paradise where they like go to someone's hometown. Really? Not like this. Not in the middle of a season. Mm -hmm. Right. I love Justin's good fake surprise face. Oh my God. <laughs> he did a lot. <gasps> he was like, what? Guys, he's what? known for his facial expressions. What did you expect? Yeah. No, I know, but like clearly. It was multi staged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, they didn't just show up at his door. <laughs> so, do, you know? so, like, did, does he think that, like, just like the producers are coming by to say what's up and then, like, they surprise him with didn't they her? say, I think they mentioned that he got a call that Eliza was coming. Didn't no? I don't know if it was that alive. Maybe they, I don't know, they might just say, hey, we're going to stop so by much, for a surprise. I just can't imagine, you know, it's one thing to try to keep these people in the dark when they're in control of the atmosphere. But right. like if they're flying to your house, like I don't know how much they, they can't just show up and be right. like, we're showing up. Right. What if we're going to film home? you? Like Justin has a right to say what no he's to in that. a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Like it could be at work. It could be anywhere. Like he could have been like why are you guys coming yeah. like i i'm almost i i would find it hard to believe he had no idea eliza at, at some point they might have been coy and be like i don't know maybe someone from the beach who wants to like try out a chance to date you or something like that and maybe it starts with an e and ends with an a you know <laughs> like, or if he just looks out his window and sees her getting her filming her walking scenes outside yeah, of the door the like, <laughs> roll, then he opens go up go around the block oh, again i yeah. can't believe it you it's you <laughs> Thank God he's on the main floor, though. That was convenient. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Yeah, right there. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like Justin shot himself in the foot. And uh, I think he might have ruined the chances of potentially a good thing. And yeah, Eliza's not without, bl like, you know, blaming all this, I guess. And not that we're trying to really blame anyone, but I think, like you said, it seems like everyone's just more focused on how they want love to find them rather than just figuring out who they could be most compatible with and and work through some of the dirt that is you know let's say dating and figure out like you know if there's something there and um it would be a shame if there's something there and, and justin did what he did it's also such a good illustration of the fact that people believe whatever they want to believe like you know the idea of like how we all have stories about events like justin made this story like she did not choose me first and therefore like i want someone who does when he could have made the story like she never gives up on me like she's not afraid to like come back and make things right even when it's like complicated and difficult like it's like and both of those are just like versions of reality you can live in and neither is more correct than the other but it's funny how like once he settles on one he's like yeah this is like this is my emotional narrative like this is what's yeah. happening when it just have easily could have been like uh yeah. but i Whoa. felt like she kind of shot herself in the foot in the way she delivered it to him of like she gave him the update and it was all focused on rodney what she told rodney like what she like I, I felt like she didn't present it in the right way either. She was like, oh, I mean, I don't Rodney know. that he deserves someone who picks him first. Da, 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 da. I wish it would have been more like she's a, she's a quiet spoken, kind of more demure person. Like, that's fine. And also, like, she definitely owed Justin some answers. Like when he left, she picked another dude. So it seemed it would make sense that she would want to provide Justin with some context. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And again, again, if they don't want to date, they don't want to date. It's just, if I hear Justin tried to pursue her in any way, then sir, you are a game player. Yeah, it's like that tit for tat thing of like, you didn't give me a rose and I felt rejected and embarrassed. Yeah. So on some level, I had to like, and not necessarily reject you or try to embarrass you, but I had to like not give you that like ability to come back into my life without some kind of like 
reactive. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's something we're also not seeing too. You know, who knows? Yeah. As we always say. That's what I was going to say. How much was edited out? The shows yeah. are edited. Because that conversation was probably much longer. Of course. Yeah, of course. There was definitely a lot more uh, was that also, was said that we didn't get to see. I wonder, because with Paradise, it's like, how much do they really get into feasibility of relationships after the fact? Because I'm like, where's Eliza based? I think LA. I think it's like we can look it up, but ultimately, Ooh, they don't I, care. Yeah, not this. Baltimore. Yes. She, no, 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 <laughs> it is LA. Yeah, so it's like, and I think that's probably like transition. I'm sure we'll discuss this more as we get into like the potential engagements, but it's like how much because I feel like with bachelors, it's like hometown. There's this very specific time where it's like, let's talk about logistics and like fantasy suites, like, let's figure out how this might happen in the real world. And it's in paradise, like, when is that? turn where it's like okay but like can we do this i don't well who's who are you asking like i'm asking like everyone wait you <laughs> well no i mean yeah but i'm I, I got the impression you're like asking the show like when they're gonna bring it up to talk about it and i don't the show doesn't care yeah i guess i mean like, like i mean the show doesn't care if you live on mars mm -hmm. did you yeah. feel like there was a time on your season when people just like there was kind of a trend of everyone being like oh okay like let's scramble and like actually see if this is feasible yeah I don't Those think the like show cares fun. about compatibility at all. I think they care about chemistry a lot. Uh, I don't think they care about whether anything's going to work. It feels like like watching these episodes, like it was like all fun and everyone was like just kind of goofing around. And now it's like everyone's super serious and like seeing a lot of people leave. It's like scaring everybody. And now everybody's like, shit, can I do this? Like, can we actually like be fiancés and get married one day? Yeah. Um, it's it like, seems like it's starting to get serious. It's like beach fatigue now, too. Even like Mara showed up. Everyone's just like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, everyone's really tired. I know. I felt so sad. So I feel like that I we did her dirty. For, yeah. That was very edited, I felt like. I was like, you're telling me not a single person got up to give her a hug. Like, I felt like there was some splicing of footage that uh, was gone. Maybe, but I do think they, they probably accurately captured the energy yeah. that is kind of, you know, they've been there for, what, two and a half weeks now. There's definitely, it's, again, it's a lot like summer camp. There's a lot of bonding that's happened. I think... I remember being in that in those shoes and like the late arrivals, you're just like, I guess, all right, what's your name? <laughs> yeah. Sure. You know, like it's I don't really fault anyone. It's just how the show is. It happens every season. But yeah, I, I yeah. felt I felt bad for Mara. Boy, when they just they just sit her down in a, a chair, she will talk. Andrew and Mara on that day bed, when she said, I'm over here when he wasn't looking at her. Yeah. Oof. They were not vibing. She's a a firecracker. Firecracker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was doing some shimmies. I was like, she's bringing so much energy to this, and they are giving her nothing. <laughs> I get it. Like, you don't like if you're talking to somebody who's being aloof, you want their attention. Andrew owed her that. I mean, again, she had the right to say something, but if there was ever a chance, if Andrew was in any way thinking, maybe I'll, you know, I guess this, when she was like, I'm over here, I can just assure you in his mind, he was like, nope. He's like, yeah, so anyways, I'm date I'm in love with just you know, yeah. basically. It was like after that, he's like, Yeah, so I'm in a relationship. Everybody was pretty much just saying, Yeah, like I'm very serious in a relationship. Like, it's nice to uh thanks for pulling me aside, but I'm gonna go back to the day bed. And now. Uh, and then you have the twins, I guess. But why Justin and not Joey? We didn't even see footage of her talking to Joey. How did she possibly make a decision which one she wanted to make a churro out of? True. That's true. My assumption is the jewelry? No, that <laughs> see one made himself more available. <laughs> When she talked. Did she talk to Joey and they just cut it? No. The person she went on a date with. Was it Joey? Justin, Justin. Justin. She talked to Justin. She talked to Justin, but we didn't see her talking to Joey. So There's how probably... did she possibly on the day bed be like, mm -hmm. Oh, she's like, I don't know. I got one twin who wants to go out with me. What's the point of talking to the other? Yeah. That's true. I also, I wonder if part of it is being like, oh, also, Shanae or this like Flo who like, we don't know her. She's from Flo Bachelor Australia. Flo calls herself the path of least resistance. I was like, oh, Flo. Oh, I really yeah. like her. I love habit. Flo. Yeah. She's great. I feel like they've they've hidden flow from us. I'm like, she's she like a, said some shit during this season yeah, that they yeah. have not aired, and I wish they did. She's like a free spirit. I feel yeah. like yeah. She's, she's Russian, right? <laughs> no, I think she's Swedish. I thought she was Dutch, and then she's on Bachelor. I know she, well, that she's, sounds right. Pretty she sure. I think she's, she's Dutch. She's Dutch, but she was on Bachelor in Paradise, Australia. Well, people. I mean, she might be originally from. No, that's what I'm saying. Wait, was she this also the first year that they like included some people they've from had Australia? Some, they've had uh, a few other people. Courtney, a guy. He was on Bachelor in Paradise America. They've, they've had a few others. And they had a guy this season too. But yeah, they've done it before. True. Anyway, so yeah, Mara goes on a date. We get a quick update from Johnny and Victoria. Mm -hmm. Not going to age well. What did you think of him saying he's, Johnny said he's now open to the 
idea of getting engaged. It happens when you're not looking for it. And he wasn't looking for it before, despite just going on The Bachelorette. Yeah, no, it doesn't make much sense. So I'm like, so why did you go on the show if you weren't looking for an engagement? Did that just like blow open his potential motives? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think in life, people are really good at convincing themselves of things. We've talked about this before. I think Johnny is really into Victoria. I think he likes her a lot more than he liked Gabby. I like them both together. I think they're cool. Are you glad she picked him and not, what, Alex? The other guy? No, I didn't like that guy, really. Um, but Johnny's cool. He's He seems like really shy, um, which kind of like sometimes comes off like he doesn't really like her, but I think that they're really good together. They seem good together. And Johnny opens up about his family. Yeah. I feel like that didn't really get the attention it deserved. Yeah, his brother's like in prison and yeah, and his mm-hmm. mom is, you know, his health is struggling, but it just seemed usually, you know, that like gets a date or there's like a yeah. moment. This was yeah. more like a quick up, like a side conversation. You would mm-hmm. think they would have focused on that a little bit more. You, you, we're not seeing much of Johnny and Victoria. I wonder if that has anything to do with where things stand, where things stand now. But I, I mean, they're not really focusing on any of their couples. I mean, Kate and Logan. <laughs> yeah. They're not focusing on any of their, like, what seems to be, at least now, happy couples. Like, yeah. Kate's intense. That's a good descriptor. Yeah. <laughs> she scares me. She, I feel like if I was dating her, I would just be, like, scared. So, like, walk on, like, I'd be, like, just walking on eggshells all the time yeah. around her. Well, and she's saying, he's saying things to her, like, I feel like you talk down to me. Yeah. And that's what she it seems fully like. denies it. But then she's turning around saying what car he drives and oh, how, yeah. like, she, little he has going for him. Kate is an example of, of, why people criticize you know anyone in relationships with a bit of an age difference because yeah. Kate is seemingly Kate talks about how much she wants you know a guy or at least her you know she doesn't even talk about wanting her equal she talks about having a guy who's like taking charge yeah. and like providing and do all of these things and yet she's investing her time in someone who's considerably younger than her I got no problem with that but like if you you know if you want to be in a relationship with someone with an age difference, then you have to recognize that yeah. you don't get to date them and then try to mold them up and make them who you are. You have to accept them as your equal. I feel like he's going to watch all this back and like see her talking badly about like his beat up orange car. Like who cares about your car? Like, and, and I feel like unless there's something that they're like not showing us, like that maybe he doesn't have a job or like hasn't had a job in a long time. Like he's just, she's making it seem like she just knows that he's like broke and like mm-hmm. that he can't like support her. But, and then you know what? If that's not for you, that's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Don't date him. Yeah. I don't know if I really even buy Kate wants a guy who takes charge and does all these things. Because if she does, then why is she investing so much time in Logan? You know, I, but she seems to really enjoy being in charge. Yeah. But have you, so I don't like the way that Kate is going about this at all, but have you had this fight before the like, I want more fight? Because I have, and it's like, it's a fucking mind. And that's not to, like, excuse any of Kate's behavior, but, like, have you had this fight like, sure. with a partner that, like, you're, like, can you please give me more? Like, I feel like I'm giving you so much. I'm, I'm hoping if you've had it, it didn't include all the other things Kate has said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and most of the time when you have that argument of, like, can you give me more? It's like, I need more love from you. I need more validation that you're in this, too. It's not like, I'm going to need more financial support once we you know get out of like that's what she's saying because mm-hmm. he's not like you know he's not like not showing her how he feels like he definitely is he definitely likes her a lot so it's not even about like the emotional give me more it's like just work harder and give me and make more yeah. money for me like i don't know well and she even weird. said something like she's like my mom always said this is the best time of the relationship and this is yeah, when I you're supposed to be getting the most which I, I've heard that before, but again, you're on the beaches of paradise. This isn't a situation where he can pick you up from work or like drop you off coffee. Like there isn't yeah. that same normalcy that a day to day life is. So you can't necessarily base what normal life is going to be like yeah. off of what's going on right now. That was an interesting, like the whole like if this is the best it's ever going to be. Because I've definitely I feel like there's that sentiment of like especially like some of my like mid 40s female friends are like wait till you get married <laughs> like the shit will go down <laughs> like it will be 20 times worth any flaw you see expect that to be like you know like i do feel like that is a narrative and i'm curious what you guys think about that yeah newly engaged <laughs> yeah 
Um, I it's disagree getting worse. with it. <laughs> yes. She already oh dropped God. off the face of the earth. Yeah, I'm already regretting it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, I, I, I disagree with it. I mean, especially because it's not like they just had like some romantic meetup at a bar where they locked out. Like they're on a TV show, a reality TV show where it's probably really exciting. And obviously it's going to die off when they're home. But I wouldn't say like their relationship right now is like the most romantic and the best it's ever going to be. Like I think that grows with time as you get to know each other and when cameras aren't on you. And you get to like talk about things that you wouldn't normally talk about on TV and like all the little things that you discover about each other. But again, I, I'm not 40 or 50 years old, so yeah, who knows? And yeah, I mean, I'm sure when you get married, I have never been married and I'm sure it does get harder and more intense. But I think that also might speak, you know, I think a lot of people who marry, marry people are not as super compatible with. Yeah. You know, I think... Um, and yeah, that, it's like musical chairs season that, where it's like most gets, of the friend group is married. Yeah, I think a lot comes down to who you marry. Yeah. My parents are high school sweethearts, and yeah. I think they love each other more now today than, than ever. Oh. So I kind of model my yeah. what I want after my parents. Wait, Jake, what do you think the key to success is? For my parents? Yeah. It's a great question. Should um, we call them? Yeah, let's call them. <laughs> They're actually on a flight back from L.A. right now to Florida. Oh, shoot. Um, they came in town for the engagement. But I, I don't know. I mean, they're... They're kind of opposites. My dad is kind of like the loud class clown and my mom is like the more like reserved, but I don't know. I think opposites attract and, and more than anything, they just like really support each other and they love each other. They brag about each other. They're always dancing with each other. I don't know if there's like one key to success, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I do clearly, obviously marriage is going to be harder and there's more serious things, but yeah. I also do think a lot of people get married to people they're not super compatible with. So it, it yeah. it's all it's all perspective. It's situational, I suppose. But I just feel like when Kate is unhappy, it's not her fault. Mm. Yeah, because I think the thing that's I think so tricky about the more fight is that like in when I've when I've had the more fight, it's like I want you to show some kind of like initiative. Like I just want I want to feel like you want to be here is like kind of what it's come down to for me. And I think that's hard because you kind of end up in this catch 22 where it's like, OK, well, then if you do more, you're just doing it because I told you to do more yeah. when it's like really what you're arguing with is your own perspective that maybe you deserve better. And like you're trying to get somebody else to like speak to that fear when that's actually kind of an internal conversation about being like, is this a relationship where I feel like love scene, et cetera. And sure, there's maybe like a little bit of change in a partner's behavior, but overall, it's kind of like a you conversation. I, yeah. There's something about the way Kate says it, too, because when you're describing it, and I feel like you're you're speaking to, from personal experience and for people who in those situations where you just you feel like you're just not getting something you really need. Like, a, you know, someone's not maybe meeting your love languages or something or communication style or, you know, and you're just like, hey, I just really need this. You know, I need. Can you please? It's, yeah, it's like reciprocity. Know, yeah. And with Kate, it's more like I don't even know if she needs it. I know she wants it. You know, I know like, she's, I deserve to I think have she it. knows she thinks she deserves it, you know, but it's not coming from a place of like, hey, man, I really care about you. We have so many good things, but can you just like help me here? I really need this and I really need I want to feel like this. And and it would really help be helpful if you could do this. And this is how I feel. Love, could you work on this, please? No, it's it's very motherly. I also think it's so to we touched they touched on this in the episode about the fact that she said that in the middle of the rose ceremony. Like mm -hmm. I just think that is such an inappropriate time to have that conversation. Yeah, put him with on your blast. It's like dragging yeah. him in front of all of his peers, like trying to shame him. It's like, this is yeah. when you're supposed to say nice things about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah literally everybody else is like having their sweet little moment. She's yeah. like, "Can you give me more?" And he's like, uh, "I don't know what you mean, but I, I think so." <laughs> and then like you know, Lindsay Lindsay comes down and. Poor Lo Lindsay. Logan's kind of oh like, God. you know, what do we think Logan should have not entertained it? it he was, should have. It was just, ugh, it was so hypocritical, I felt like, on Kate's part. Sure. She was finding any opportunity. He's trying to she say. She just wants out. I think saying, Kate just wants she's out. She's like, he was saying, I didn't say yes. I didn't say yes or no. I Before I said anything, I pulled you and I wanted to talk to you. And that's not enough for her. Yeah. She's then saying, no, you should have just said no without even talking to me. Yeah, he never really entertained it. He and just didn't he shut up, her down. Yeah, when he brings up her date, she goes, that was days ago. Days yeah. ago. That was I'm a, so different. She goes, I'm a different person. <laughs> yeah. Eon, she says, it was eons ago. I'm a different person. Really, Kate, how? Please, <laughs> please give us the masterclass or the TED Talk on how one becomes an entirely different person in two days. Yeah. I could also see Logan, though, in terms of like the narrative that already exists about him being kind of like playing the field. I could also see why it would be like a low reward, high risk situation of him 
like potentially pursuing Lindsay. Because I think it would validate a lot of criticism that I don't know is necessarily fair, but that is definitely like on the tip of people's tongues with him. Yeah. And like, I think it's also like, should we talk about like Gabby and, Gabby Rachel, and Rachel coming and like the way they contextualized the men? What did we, what did we think of Gabby and Rachel showing up? Because I know I'm going to get, get criticized for not having anything nice to say about Rachel, but like, <laughs> what did we, what did you guys think of it? I was telling Jake before we started recording, I was like, it had the same energy as the girls who have been in college for three or four months and come back on Thanksgiving break to their high school. Yeah. And like distract everyone in the middle of class and all the like seniors are like, great. Yeah. Now we have to sit around and. But I, I just, them. I did not understand from it. It sure seemed like Gabby and Rachel came down. To shit on Logan. <laughs> to warn Kate, of all people, to like somehow save Kate, who didn't need to be saving, because all Kate wants is an excuse to get out of this relationship at the end of Paradise. And the two bachelorettes come down to rescue Kate and shit on Logan? For what? Like, yeah. am, am I missing something? Do they not show something? Or like, what, are, what am I missing? Because if, like, I remember, like, let's just play the like, like Logan story. You had two bachelorettes. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of like... We don't know what's going on. No one knew what was going on. We have two bachelorettes. Rachel was in her feelings. I don't know. I feel like maybe she got rejected by someone. I don't remember. But someone, you know, like it was, you know, obviously a stressful environment for everyone. Well, she had the rose ceremony where she was rejected. Then she had the wrestling date where they weren't paying attention to her. Okay. Was that? I don't know. I don't remember. But at some point, she had a nice chat with Logan and she called dibs. She's just like dibs. Oh, yeah. yeah that was even before the cruise ship. Yeah. And no, there was no like conversation with Logan. But like, hey, Logan, who who are you feeling? No, dips. Right. And Gabby was just like, okay, well, I just want to be there for my friend. She's in her feels right now. Logan's all yours. Yeah. That that was the discussion. Okay, fine. But like, Logan had a say, and that say was to be like, I don't know, and like, imagine the pressure in that environment. Be like, you know what? Rachel wants to date you. Okay, like I guess I'm gonna. Right. I barely know them, so I'll go to this direction for a while. And then after a couple of days, Logan. Yes, he was the one person who, like, switched. No, but also the damning moment for Logan was he already realized he wasn't into Rachel. He didn't have an opportunity to talk to her. And he then at the, the rose, rose, he yes. accepted the rose. And his yeah, voiceover said, do I, like, want to be with Rachel? No, but I would be stupid if I, you know, gave up an opportunity sure. to talk with Gabby at some point. Yeah. That's what people didn't like. I, yeah. I understand that. He didn't do it perfectly, you know. And the voiceover, I don't know. And I'm not saying Logan's not without criticism, but I'm just saying... He had a right to like not be into Rachel and he had a right to be slightly more into Gabby. Yeah. And he certainly could have done it better. I'm sure he could have communicated it better, of, of course. But then he went to Gabby. Gabby was in it. And it was first all he had that great cocktail hour with Jesse Palmer at the cruise ship yeah. bar where they talked about their feelings. And then <laughs> Gabby was seemingly excited yeah. and gave it all a shot. Then he got sick and nothing happened. And it just seemed like Rachel came down, you know, I just like, I hated the end. I just like, I understand. I empathize with Rachel, why she might, you know, not love the situation, but I just really hated how it just sounded a bit vindictive. Yeah. You know, she's like, he, he thinks he's the bachelorette. Like we need to do something about it. He it's has like, the power. What? Yeah. Like, and I agree with all the girls who were on the couch talking, um, while like they were off talking about how, like, you can't judge someone on like, them flip-flopping in the past because that's all you do in life. You flip-flop until you find your person. Yeah. If you flip-flop, it's because they weren't right. So it's like... Yeah, you know. what 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 is the crime here? And it's and I feel like Gabby was just there to support her friend Rachel again. And again, unless we're missing something, yeah. then like what... That's it. They, they had their two bachelorettes come down just to like dump on Logan for Kate's sake. I would have loved to get some dates on like when exactly this was filming because clearly they all are ooing before, and aahing over Gabby's ring. It was before her and Tino broke up. Rachel had a ring on. Yeah, Rachel okay, had but, a ring too. But they didn't include any sort of clip of people looking at her ring that I, I saw. I oh, I'm probably like trying to minimize. Shot? Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe. I'm I just remember them talking a lot no. about Gabby's. I don't know. But you know what I would have loved to have seen? I would have loved to have seen and maybe... Obviously, they didn't know this was going to happen at the at the time. But I would have loved to have seen a conversation between Victoria and Gabby because that would have been a lot more impactful and interesting and like meaningful than Gabby and Rachel coming down to dump on Logan for what it seems like no reason and just kind of the show made th them look petty. 
And maybe they weren't trying to be, and maybe mm-hmm. it was like, but the show made that situation look, they made Gabby and Rachel look petty. I agree. Because yeah, I really love both not, of them during their season. I'm not saying they season, are petty. But that wasn't a good look. It just wasn't a great look. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. saying, like, why? Like, why didn't they have Gabby come down and talk to Victoria and have a like an honest conversation about like, yeah, I had a really good thing with Johnny, but he wasn't ready to get engaged. Yeah. How are things going with you two? How mm-hmm. are things progressing? Like he wasn't he he wasn't ready to settle down. And Victoria would be like, Well, I have some of those same concerns. Let's talk about it. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Like, but that didn't happen. That would have come across a lot better and more like I I feel like Gabby could have looked better and it could have Woman it could to have, woman, it could have me, been productive you know. too. Yeah. May, maybe, maybe something good came from it, or maybe it created conflict. I don't know, but like, I would have loved that conversation. And again, we don't, we've never met Kate. I don't know. We don't know her as a person. Maybe this is maybe Kate's putting on a show. Maybe it's highly edited. I don't know. Yeah, it has been very localized to a relationship thing, though. So it's like I wonder if she is a good friend. Because you know, some she, people, she might be an amazing friend who are like amazing friends, and then you see the sure. way that they're like making choices in their romantic relationships. And you're like, oh, boy. To- I think oh, Johnny. No. I think Johnny's a <laughs> oh, good Lord. friend. I think Johnny lo- is a. Oh, I bet Johnny is a great friend to his guys. Like. For sure. And I don't know how Johnny is in relationships, but I bet he's a much better a, friend than partner. People make great friends and bad partners all the time. Yeah. Do you think people make good partners and bad friends? Probably, but probably less, less I guess, common. I mean, if you throw everything you have into a relationship and ditch your friends. Yeah. yeah if you go to yeah. Boyfriend Island or. Yeah. 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 Sure. That's a thing. Yeah. That's definitely a thing. I've lost a lot of friends just because they're like, all right. I got a girlfriend now. I'm never going to leave the house. Does that make you ultimately a great partner in the long run? Because I feel like if it's that drastic, it's it's not really about the relationship. It's just more of a personality trait. Yeah. You just you don't know how to manage yeah. boundaries. And just because you're giving your current partner all your time, that's just because that's what you're excited about in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably something deeper going on there yeah. in terms of <laughs> validation. Can we talk about it? itching versus pain? Oh. That was hilarious. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. I, I, well, what should we just play that whole fight? Because honestly, while watching it, I'm still confused. It well, because it was basically it was never about the itch versus the the pain. He used that as an example of her saying, "I'm impatient and I'm stressed. This is how I'm feeling." And he goes, "Well, that's the same thing. It's like saying it's like he then jumped to yeah. the itching versus pain. Yeah, Super as an side-tracked. example, and they got so, so wait, focused so, on that. So. Not even so Genevieve was like, I'm I'm impatient and I'm stressed, something along those lines. And he was saying, he then paraphrased and said, Oh, so you're blank. And she goes, No, that's not what I said. Yeah. Don't like, don't put words in my she mouth. She was like, I'm frustrated. So what, she, like, yeah. what was the annoyed. thing he said she was? Yeah. She said she was frustrated. And he said, You're annoyed. And she's like, No, I'm not. Aaron's line though, she's probably taking her like designer yeah. bags on the jungle path right now. <laughs> and then it cuts to her doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. You're not wrong. They're yeah. they're an hysterical couple. Yeah. Let's just break, try let's just try to break it down here. Okay, so she said I'm impatient. <laughs> also, she then said I'm annoyed and he said oh, so you're stressed. She said I'm impatient. He said you're stressed. She said I'm no, I'm not stressed. I'm annoyed. And he goes it's the same thing. It's rooted in the same thing. Then jumped to the itching and pain and said because itching is low level pain. I so, mean, as someone who's like was an itchy kid, like <laughs> I'll go to bat for like I get what you're saying that itching can be painful, but like that's really not the point. Yeah, it's not the point of at their all. Argument. <laughs> it's such. Why a, didn't he just say? But like, I mean, I I'm do. I do think like that. is itching pain is a great conversation <laughs> starter. <laughs> like to Aaron's credit, like. I feel like we could, I could, we could argue about this for a good yeah 10 first minutes. date. It's question. like you know how some people are like, is a hot dog a sandwich? And like that's yeah. their big like debate is, yeah. is itching pain? It's a good one. There's a lot to say about it the is. topic. It's, it's a meaty <laughs> question, but like Aaron is just like every time he was just like, look it up. Yeah, look, look it. Up. It's a fact. It's look a it fact. Up. Look it up. Like <laughs> big facts. I don't think that's a fact. Yeah, sir. Well, that's an opinion. <laughs> It depends on your pain tolerance. They're both feelings. <laughs> they're both sensations. But yeah, they're depending on... You cannot look that up. <laughs> depending on how you perceive a sensation, yeah. one might be painful and one might be an irritant. Yeah. I also think it was like he was close to doing the right thing because she was saying like how I'm feeling and I feel like one good response as a partner is to be like, oh, totally. Yeah. I validate that. You Maybe it's also like this. Like, you know, like trying to relate. And he was almost doing that. 
But instead, he was like, no, this is how you're feeling. And she was yeah. like, what? No, that's wrong. And then they like pivoted completely. And then it was just like the way it snowballed. Yeah. So I just it, love it how says, they, they, they didn't, neither of them made any sense. And you could tell that the other person couldn't figure out what the other person was trying to say. <laughs> They were made for each other. These two people, like we're yes talking about no. chemistry versus compatibility. These two people have so much chemistry and they're deeply compatible. Are okay. they though? I don't know. I mean, they 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 might be too similar. Kind of like, you know, Jake's parents. There's some opposites there, but no one's there's no one in that relationship is is like letting the other person know like we shouldn't walk off this cliff. You know, <laughs> there's no one in that relationship saying we shouldn't run this red light. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? There's but them, I, them together is a tragedy waiting to happen. I would argue the red light's going to get run. So you might as well have someone else in the car who's like down with it. There's no. As opposed to like another person being like, please, please stop, break. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't. There's no one there to say we shouldn't drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> well, itch and pain are closely related but distinct sensations. They share largely overlapping mediators and receptors, and itch responding neurons are also sensitive to pain stimuli, but they are separate sensations oh there we go well we looked it up aaron yeah and you false have been found wrong itching is low level pain so sweet low. nectar my man <laughs> oh my god the f <laughs> the fucking nectar conversation <laughs> i mean you know, this bro's just having a good time yeah. i when the best line for me was when the sun dips low beyond the horizon Sweet next, sweet nectar. When you get a sip of that iced cough, like it, everything's shortened. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think that's what I think they're charming in those moments. I, I mean, love it. Yeah, you know, I, I've I've heard I've never met Aaron, and everyone who's met him said he's a fun, lovable guy to be around, and he's good TV, but he just does shit that makes so obnoxious sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna go find Aaron sometime. You still want to have sex with him? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, if he's, I uh, would tell him not to run the red light. <laughs> do you, know do you like a? Are you into like a a mimbo? No, a not himbo. Really. You mean? I don't know. What's a mimbo? It, what's a mimbo? A himbo. A man. A man. A man, man bimbo. <laughs> a mimbo. Man bimbo. You're wrong. I don't know. No. I've never. Heard I'm gonna pull okay, my hair. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> no, literally, it is himbo. All the comments are gonna be like mimbo. Maybe, maybe I'm aging myself. It used to be mimbo. Okay. Well, mimbo's a fun phrase. That I think himbo is more of the time. It's himbo. Himbo's a new. It's. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do you know if he's still dating Genevieve? I don't know. Slide on into them DMs. Are you into that? The pretty face? Do you, like, do you want, like, is serious question? Not, I don't know. I don't feel like I have a distinct type you, per se. I feel you like want to date him or just person. have sex with him? Both. You would date him? Yes. For a little bit. <laughs> I'm not the type of person that, like, just wants to have sex with someone. You don't seem compatible on a, cere <laughs> a cerebral level, is, is what I'm wondering. And, I'm, and that's fine. I don't know. Like, I'm not here to tell you who you should love or... Thank what you. you prioritize in terms of compatibility, but I'm uh, generally asking is, is a himbo like someone you might be attracted to? I don't know. I haven't in the past. There's just something about him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I listen, I support this. Thank you. I'll send everyone updates. All right. What do we got next? Back the Sadie Hawkins dance. Should we wrap up with that? Oh, well, we don't say it. Sadie Hawkins dance. Got Thomas and Becca Patrick arrive. Place. That's all kind of what that's what I was saying, that whole chunk. Tyler and Brittany go on a date. Okay. <laughs> Not much there. Yeah. No, yeah. Awesome. They seem nice. Thomas and Becca show up. Oh, oh no, back to Aaron and Genevieve. Aaron made a comment. He goes, for whatever I did, I'm sorry. And it's just like, I kind of empathize with him, but at the same time, because, and I've seen, you know, people have made those types of apologies. I feel like I have in, in, in relationships where like, honestly, I don't know what is upsetting you? I'm sorry. Just, I'm sorry. Can we make this Can over? we just make this better? I'm so sorry. But like Aaron saying, for whatever I, after that whole conversation, he just says, for whatever I did, I'm sorry. Which tells me he doesn't know what he did. And, and I'm glad he's sorry, but unfortunately, he doesn't know what he's apologizing for, which almost certainly means this will happen again and again and again yeah. and again and again and again. But since all their fights are such about such like small, like non-important things, maybe they can have these over and over again fights and then just have like crazy sex afterwards and then just like forget about it. I think for a period of time. Yeah. I think they'll just get annoyed with each other. I mean, they're like, they're like classic young love. I mean, they look like two 16 year olds in a relationship. They remind me of like every high school relationship that's ever had. Yeah. How old are they? 
I mean, they seem fun and sweet, but I just feel like they Aaron might. Aaron is I think 27. Bo- I think Genevieve is also 27. Mm-hmm. Same, really? I'm so glad we picked other people. That was great. That yeah. was a good moment for us. Yeah, I feel like they, they need people to level them up. Done. Out or out. <laughs> Done. I don't know. I'm just like, you guys understand each other. That's why I. They don't, though. He literally says, whatever I did. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah she's like, true. oh. I, but he I understands that he needs to just apologize. And I'm not, I don't stand by that. That's a shitty apology. But he does understand that he's like, I'm not going to win. Yeah, no, I don't think he's Darren's. A, I think Aaron's probably a great guy. You know, he's a sweet guy. Just, uh, you know, some. Sh- I do think he needs therapy. But I just think there's so many people who'd be like, OK, you're you're trying to leave again. Godspeed. Like what? But Aaron's like, nope. I'm going to go. I'm going to talk to you. A good We're going to talk. We're going to have tense. It's going to be tense for a minute. Then I'm going to make you feel loved. And then you're going to take your bags back. Yeah, there's, but there's not fixing anything. But the first time yeah. he did that, he brought his bags back. And I thought that was nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wheeled those babies back. Becca, uh, Brittany, and, and Tyler went on a date. She said, my boyfriend, Tyler. I thought that was oh, cute. Oh, yeah. She said, my boyfriend and I are going on our first date. Mm-hmm. I like them together. They seem like wholesome. They're cute. They nice. are wholesome. But we, said, just, do we, don't, we just don't, not much to say about them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're wholesome. They don't unless, I mean, drama. unless you have more to say. When me and my fiance were watching The Bachelorette whenever he was on, that was last season, right? Mm-hmm. I think she was like, he reminds me of you. And I'm like, okay, I like that guy then. Um, but ever since then, I just kind of like, I feel like we look yeah, kind of similar. Yeah, you have a similar eye twinkle. Yeah. yeah. Eye twinkle. You both have very pretty faces. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a twinkly smile. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. So we just go into, oh. We wrap up with Becca Thomas and Sadie Hawkins dance. Yeah, Beck, I mean, Thomas just re- wears a, a good 80s suit. Oh, also, they said that was 90s theme. I don't know. Was that 90s? It seemed like a lot of def- decades. It seemed like a mix of 70s in there. There were some 80s. Wells had like an 80s suit on. Thomas's suit was more 80s. And as someone who is a 90s kid. Yeah, same. I give the contestants more of a pass because they didn't know no, to the, pack the, for this? production clearly oh, bought them uniforms, oh. right? Or outfits or costumes, costumes. <laughs> uniforms. I don't know if I can know. Oh, you these are all new things. Never right? mind. No? I take back. I'm okay. assuming, yeah, Wells didn't pack a Miami Vice suit yeah. to Paradise, right? Well, I was I was saying the contestants. I thought they had to wear their own stuff. Everyone gets costumes? I, I mean, I, I don't know. There I were definitely get... like some bright pink neon, like, yeah. a, like what are they, like aerobic? I haven't like been to Warner's Paradise since and... they started doing these prom and City Hawken theme type of dates, which I quite like, but I'm guessing they didn't dress themselves. I see. Yeah, yeah. the sweat, sweat bands around the heads. Yeah, but. Oh my God. Yeah, I just, the NC, like, that we whole... got to talk uh, about the Andrew, uh, like, Jasenia, uh, uh. like, <sighs> Please, 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 please. I, I don't feel like Jessenia or Nancy, either of them looked particularly great. What was, does anyone know what Jessenia, Jessenia's point was? I think she was going back to their conversation on the beach when Andrew had said, I'm not able to give you everything that I can because I'm in this dark space. And she said, well, you've not given me the opportunity to get you out of this dark space. I think from Andrew's perspective, that was kind of tying up their relationship with a bow and ending it. Sure. But sh- I don't think she felt like that was the end. And I don't think she felt like she got the clarity or the closure that she wanted. So I th- think she was just trying to say, tell me how you feel. Like, where is this? Like, just yeah. be honest with me. Because I'm watching you go on a date with NC. Only talk to NC. Yeah, but her... And here I am standing. Her... She started critiquing, like, his whole paradise experience. Yeah. What'd she say? Like, sliding... It's like a bro's trip. Skirting by. Well, she basically was criticizing him for dating. Yeah. Which is what you're supposed to do on the show. Because, like, Andrew, obviously, had the whole clearly came, clearly came for Teddy. You know, he, he reinforced that. Teddy left him abruptly. No real... Cl- she just left. She literally left. She was, like... She told the cameras, I don't know if I'm feeling this Andrew guy. Got uncomfortable. I don't know. Like, peaced out on yeah. Andrew. And I think... Well, I know that Andrew was really really into her, really bummed out. Okay, fine. In the real world, sometimes we're dating someone, we like someone, they don't like us, whatever, we're disappointed. So what do we do? We keep dating, you yeah. know? Rachel, Rachel's out there, didn't work out with her and Tino, she's dating again, right? She, yeah. He went on a couple dates with Brittany, or I don't know, had a cup of coffee or something happened with Brittany. Tyler shows up. Tyler, is, Brittany's more into Tyler. All right, didn't work out for they didn't work out there. Josenia shows up. They seem to have, I don't know, some interest in each other, but like clearly there doesn't seem to be much there. We haven't seen any of them. I forgot that they're in a relationship from either of them. It doesn't, they're not really showing. 
you know, whatever is going on, we're not seeing much of it. And yeah. even the people on the beach, I think, was it Logan or someone else kind of said, well, they they had a thing for however brief it was, was kind of something along the lines Logan said. They kind of acknowledged that it was like they didn't even, they were unclear of mm -hmm. what was going on. And from what we saw, it sure, it does seem like Andrew really didn't like sit, just like he seemed like he said yes to NC without really talking to Desenio mm -hmm. or, you know, and maybe they had some kind of conversation, but I agree. He probably could have been a little bit more communicative, you know, maybe, I don't know. But like, that's not what really Jasenia was complaining about. She was just more trying to make him feel bad for how he's going about his dating experience. She's yeah. just, I don't know, it's just kind of confusing that you're just kind of dating all these people. And what does that say about you? You know, it was almost like she was trying to like therapize. Is that a word? Therapize? <laughs> you know, like, but she was like, she was trying to like, you know, what does that say? Like, do you want to, like, how does that make you feel? Like, how does yeah. that make you feel that you're going around and you're like, just like dating all these people without really making any connections? And it was just like, listen, if you still like them and you want to, then say that. Yeah. Like, if you don't feel like you got closure, then say that. But what, it just feels like she, to me, it seemed like she knew there wasn't much of a connection. She felt a bit slighted. She didn't like that Andrew was having fun with someone else at a dance and just try to make him feel bad about it Yeah, for dating. I thought that was the wrong approach for sure. I Well, I think it's that thing of when you're together, like you're kind of on the same team and you're like, you answer to each other for your emotions. And then once you're broken up, like you no longer get that. And it seemed like her trying to like continue to recreate that, like, like you're impacting me by like making out with her on the dance floor. And I get it. Like, that's no fun. Yeah, yeah. Like that yeah. sucks to watch, but totally. it's, it's also not something he necessarily owes you. Like that's why you're broken up is because he's no longer like showing emotional consideration for you in all these specific kinds of ways. Yeah. I don't know if she truly knew that they were fully broken up. I, I think she knew that. Otherwise she would have said that. Right. But I feel like that was kind of part of her point was trying to figure out exactly where they stood because obviously she knows he went on this date with her. I have no problem if, with if her wanting had, getting more information. Yeah, if she had just stuck with that as yeah. opposed to jumping into What's your goal What is here? your goal What is your goal yeah, And then try yeah. to shame, like, yeah. What did like, she think he was going to say? Teddy broke up with him. <laughs> Brittany broke up with him. Whatever that was. Or and it's kind she, of a mutual. It, yeah, or whatever. But she's, she wanted more clarity and then tried to accuse him of essentially leading women on. It feels like it never reached a certain point of, like, vulnerability, which is like, I, you're not a bad person for that. It's nothing wrong with that. But like, because this is becoming a pattern, like, I just want to know, like, you, 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 are you okay? You say a pattern. I don't like, he, <laughs> we're supposed to expect Andrew to like jump head first with uh, like, he, no. he just had his heart broken with Teddy. He tried to pick up the pieces and said, eh, you know what? I'm going to, Brittany C seems nice. Let's give it a go. She clearly wasn't all in. You know, so what Andrew was supposed to jump, what, head first, feet first, whatever, you know, and um, be emotionally all available, even though he was still trying to get over someone else, even while Brittany, like, I'm just saying, where could have, if we're going to criticize Andrew or but anyone. But I don't think it's a criticism. It's not a criticism. It's just an observation. Like, he What's didn't the have observation? the observation. He's yeah. had several women this summer that never reached the the deeper connection. And that's not to say there's something wrong with Andrew. It's just but there's his an implied person accusation wasn't there. there. I don't think there is. I not don't think from I, us. At all. To we be love like, him. And that's why I'm saying it's okay. If coming from a friend is what totally is different. What is he supposed to do with that? Here, and it, uh, coming from... Like, it's the same thing as to, Logan. Like, you just hop around until you find the person that you really like safety. with. But you're, they're dating. But yeah. with, with Logan, I, I mean, I, I don't remember all of Logan's dates to compare, but I'm saying, of focusing on Andrew, I'm just, I emphasize with Andrew, it's just like, here he is, he, he I think he genuinely wants to meet someone, like, more than, as much as anyone there, I don't know about more, but certainly as much as anyone, I think character matters to Andrew more than most people on that, be like, that's a defining character for Andrew, character, having good character, is a defining character. It, character matters to Andrew more than I think it matters to other people on the beach. You know, I think it truly matters to him. And he's really trying to do this the right way. And he's not doing it perfectly. But like when, if Jasenia says that, like she, she's asking for an answer. You know, she wants him to explain himself. And she's suggesting that he's not opening up with these women and not really giving any of these relationships a chance that is an accusation i'm not saying she's accusing him of being terrible but she is 
accusing him of not doing this. And I'm just like, where where along the lines has he given, whether it's Jasenia or his buddies, a reason to like question his intentions? Why? I don't understand. What? Where's the note? What could he have done differently? It's not like a, like you needed to, you did this wrong. You needed to do this. It's a like, hey, this is what happened. Like, these are all the things that have happened. I'm curious if there's any kind of through line here. Like, I'm checking up, like, just to see what's going on. He can't fall in love with someone he doesn't want to fall in love with. I think it's just a point, like, his person isn't there. Sure. I mean, I get as a buddy, you're just like, hey, man, how are you feeling about your experience? That's fine. But I just don't, the idea, anything past how are you feeling, like, it seems like you're doing this X, Y, and Z, and I just want to know why. I don't, I don't know what that X, Y, and Z is. You know, I don't know what Andrew needs to explain to anyone about what he, he's dating <laughs> and he's being broken up with and he's just trying to like deal with what he's, he's a, you know, and the first situation where it seems like he, Jacenia might be slightly more into him than he is into her, that's like the first time he's, you know, where he's like, I don't know if I'm, I might be, and then, and then he is doing the very thing that that Jasenia and and you might be suggesting he is doing, which is not trying and not being emotionally available. He's like, hey, he said, I finally met someone that is, I'm getting a little excitement of something. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. I'm going to see where it goes. And he's having fun and he's dancing. He's doing the thing that he's being accused of not doing. And it's fine that just if just like you, I agree with you, Allie. If just anyone wants a little bit more closure, and a little, like if Andrew deserve, if if he wasn't as communicative as he should have been, just anyone, by all means, like do get more get more information, and like that you deserve, she deserves that for sure. But that's not what she tried. That's not how she no, went about I, it. I completely agree. I think that conversation with just yeah, like you were saying, starts out with like a I want closure, but it <laughs> very quickly becomes I'm having a shitty fucking time watching you make out with a girl, and now I'm going to make you feel bad yeah, for that. Yeah. Like I'm going to make you answer for that. Also having flashbacks to the dance last yeah, year where she went through PTSD, all of this yeah, again. Yeah. The same thing. No. For sure. <laughs> and then NC, there's that kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No. What no. a what a NC, what an L for NC's, her. Please, like six hundred times. I'm like, that was uncomfortable. No, I'm like, like it she was wouldn't so let him much. go. It was she, a lot. Yikes. Well, Do you think it was because she like up? liked him that much, or she just didn't want to leave the show because she just know. got there? Who knows? I, I mean, was just like, was she super com- drunk? Like you know, yeah, how sometimes like combination of alcohol, the pre- like she's never been like she. I don't remember her on Clayton season, so she probably wasn't on very long. I think there's an added level of pressure for these people to try to make up for lost time. You're out, like, yeah, Mira, I was like, this is my first you one, know, on one. one on one, you know? And so I empathize with that pressure, and they already feel like an outsider and like, we gotta make the most of this. And I think she just snowballed and panicked. I don't, yeah. you know, but yeah, a lot. not a, that's definitely a tough beat for her. Do you guys like, does everyone just drink like all day when you're, when you're there? It depends. Some people are drinkers and some people aren't. Cause no one ever seems like drunk or hungover. And it's like, it just blows my mind. Cause I think they're just, yeah, they just cut that out. I think they are more drunk than you realize in yeah. a lot of cases. And no one ever seems sloppy. I'm like, don't these people just like sit on the beach and drink all day? Like the combination of the sun and the alcohol would just, I would be, I would have to leave 24 hours into being there. I think they're less sloppier than they used to be just because there's a bit of a, a drinking maximum per hour. Oh, gotcha. Where you can't just like just keep shooting shots. Yeah. I also But I do think there I think there in a lot of these cases there's alcohol is playing a role. Yeah. I, or I also think unless it's like an obvious like this is a huge part of your personality is that on night 1 you got way too drunk. Like these are people who have withstood like at least a little bit of time in the bachelor environment where yeah. there is free flowing alcohol. So I think it's like people who can have the right combination of like self-control to not make people be like, I, okay, yeah. have mm-hmm. one less, but also <laughs> are like <laughs> drinking enough that they're saying wild shit and making good television. It's that sweet little window right there. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Jacenia leaves, Andrew leaves, NC leaves. Damn. Bad vibes at, at Sadie Hawkins. Mm-hmm. I feel like Andrew had a, as good of an exit as he could have had. I mean, I, Andrew's a great guy. I mean, he's, he's up there with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Andrew. I what I like most about Andrew, and I've gotten to know him, is that when I say it, like it's he makes having good character a just it's a priority for him constantly. Like even like I loved how when he, I don't know, forgot what he said, but Joe Cindy asked him a question. Oh no, it was it was NC asked him a question, 
And he was like, this is how I'm wired. Like, I want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And again, you could, I think you can nitpick whether like who's, you know, who Andrew should have focused more on his time is on. But like, you could tell that in that moment, er like Andrew was like, I'm, I'm representing who I am. This is important to me. These are my values. Yeah. Like, and Andrew has certain values that he always adheres to. And I just have a lot of respect for him because even in these tough situations, he still prioritizes his character and his values over anything else. And I don't think that's always the case in these environments. Yeah. Agree. A king. Yeah. Who do you think are the couples that when you think about like potential engagements, like you really see it happening in the real world working out? Yeah. Final predictions. Um, Brandon and Serena. Serene. 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 Brandon Serene, I think, number one. Maybe, no, I was going to say, I don't know. I think that might be it, honestly. Really? I feel like that's the only couple on the season that's going to like last. Stand the test of time. Yeah. I feel like Danielle yeah. needs to meet Michael's son first before there's any sort of engagement. Maybe them too. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Danielle and Michael, they could work out. But I think they would want James to be involved. If they end in a relationship, I guess I could see them working out in a sense because they are both older and more mature in a sense that they I think they're I think they're more pragmatic in their decision making. Yeah. Like they're the polar opposite of Genevieve and, and Aaron. Totally. Oh, I could see Tyler and Brittany like having kind of a grocery store Joe Kendall situation where it's like a meaty, meaningful relationship that lasts like a year or two break like they get, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. they break yeah. up because of like real world reasons. But I could see them so like you mean leaving dating or leaving engaged. Leaving dating. I would say leaving dating, okay. but then like yeah. kind were of Joe and Kendall engaged? Never engaged. Never engaged. Joe and Kendall were never engaged. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe like a Joe and Kendall. I think like, yeah, three or four couples will probably get engaged. Yeah. No, we'll see. I really would have liked to have seen that uh, conversation between Victoria and Gabby. What a miss. What a miss. Jake, thanks for coming, man. Dude, thanks for having me. Uh, please let my audience know all the great things you're doing, where they can listen to your amazing music, all that yeah. fun stuff. Thanks, man. Um, thanks for having me. First of all, that was a lot of fun. Um, Jake Miller across the board on all social media, on Spotify. Go listen to my music. It just came out with a new uh, EP called Based on a True Story 2. What's it about? I've been making it over like the last year. And so some of the songs are like true to what I'm going through. The other songs are just good songs that I think other people can relate to that I might not exactly be going through. Okay. But yeah, they're all different. Some happy, some sad, some just. Is very... it out or coming out? Just came out. Just came just out. Came out. Seven brand new songs. Yeah. Seven new songs. Yeah. I'm going to go listen to it on the way home. It's got some saxophone solos. Oh. Yeah. Is that you playing? No, I wish. I tried to learn, but it is so hard. And when you live with other people, Mm. I lived with like some roommates at the time and it's just like so loud and when you suck, oh, yeah, like yeah. you really suck. So I'm just like, yeah, let's stay in my closet. Uh, well, go check out uh, Jake's a new uh, EP and uh, stream it right after you get done listening to this episode. Uh, we are back on Thursday with the one and only Jason Nash uh, as well as uh, some final thoughts on the uh, Love is Blind cutie scene and then some other, other you know, Love is Blind tea or gossip we'll, we'll have for you and uh, some texting office hours well I, I know this was super last minute and I'm so happy I didn't ghost you or like say no because I didn't realize how big of a production this was and I'm really happy I came and thank I'm, you for I'm having me I'm happy you came man when you said I'll be in a bind if you don't come I'm like shit I need to like watch these episodes right now so yeah. glad I came thank you for having me he was like I'm coming and there's like I got engaged I'm like you're fucking showing up yeah my bad <laughs> oh my gosh yeah Monday morning after engagement yep here you are hey thanks for having me I uh, had a great time thanks for listening guys go check out Jake's new music uh, we will see you back on Thursday and sorry if uh, if you were listening to Ask Nick on Monday and uh, they played the update special we killed the person who fucked up so don't you worry I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, it's it's it was fixed early Monday morning. But uh, if you haven't listened to the Ask Nick episode because you thought it was the old episode, it's been fixed. So go back and check that out. Other than that, bye. See you. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick, especially if you're looking for some relationship stories and relationship advice, as well as our Wednesday interviews with your favorite celebrities and experts. See you next time.